Okay, we are on. So, um, with nitrogen metabolism, we have to, the, the, the most important thing is balance. We have to balance nitrogen. We don't want to have too much, we don't want to have too little. And nitrogen is tricky, as I said, because there's a lot of shuffling around of nitrogen that goes from molecule to molecule. And I'm going to show you that as one of the first things that um, I talk about. In fact, it's going to be the first thing that I talk about. And that's a process called transamination. Transamination is the way in which nitrogen moves from molecule to molecule in our body. Now, like any other word that we use, um, the word itself tells us what it means. Trans meaning across, amination meaning amine groups. So transamination involves the movement of amine groups across one molecule to another. Okay. Now, um, let's think of an example. So I'd like you to uh, think of exaloacetate. Exaloacetate is a four carbon molecule. You probably don't remember the structure. But it has a double bonded oxygen at carbon number two. If I replace that double bonded oxygen with a nitrogen, I make aspartic acid. So it's very easy for me to convert exaloacetate into aspartic acid. Okay. If I look at the structure of pyruvate, pyruvate has three carbons and it also has a double bonded oxygen at carbon number two. If I replace its nitrogen, I get alanine. Okay? So we see a relationship then between these double bonded oxygens and the nitrogens. The same thing is true for alpha ketoglutarate. It has a double bonded oxygen at position number two. If I replace its double bonded oxygen with a nitrogen, I get glutamic acid. So there's a relationship then between these what are called alpha keto acids and amino acids. Sydney, you didn't need to do that now. I was asking for you to do it after class. So thank you, though. Yeah. Uh, in any event, you haven't missed much. So it's on the video. Uh, but thank you. The, um, there's a relationship between them. And this relationship is actually passed along in transamination. I'll give you an, an example. Let's imagine that I have some alanine sitting around in my cell. And let's imagine that I have some exaloacetate sitting around in my cell. One of those has a nitrogen, that's the alanine. One does not have a nitrogen, that's the exaloacetate. Let's say my body needs aspartic acid, but it's got plenty of alanine. What's it going to do? Well, there's an enzyme called a transaminase. Transaminase, and it's a general name for an enzyme. It's not a specific enzyme. It works on many different substrates. A transaminase will grab both of those, and it will transfer the nitrogen from alanine onto exaloacetate. And it will take the oxygen off of exaloacetate and put it onto pyruvate, or on, onto alanine to make pyruvate. The result is I start with with alanine and exaloacetate, I end up with pyruvate and aspartic acid. I've just swapped the groups. That's the transamination that I'm talking about. Swapping a nitrogen for an oxygen, and these are always done as swaps. So if I started with glutamic acid and pyruvate, I would end up with alanine and alpha ketoglutarate. So, this is the way in which nitrogens move through the body, or one of the ways. Similar things can happen with glutamine, although it's a little bit more complicated, and I won't go into that right here. But you get the idea of transamination, swapping oxygens and nitrogens, and moving nitrogen through the body. As a result of this, it's fairly easy for us to make several of the amino acids. The three I just mentioned, glutamic acid, aspartic acid, and alanine are probably the most trivial ones to make because they can be made either from citric acid intermediates or from pyruvate, which is a glycolysis intermediate. So very, very easy to make those. Now, one of the things that, and this is just sort of an elaborate uh, process showing you the whole thing. One of the things that's important is another coenzyme that's important. It's known as pyridoxyl phosphate. You should know this. Pyridoxyl phosphate, you don't need to know the structure, but you should know that it's involved in transamination reactions, meaning it's involved 
and important for the synthesis of many amino acids. Now we think about this in terms of the synthesis of amino acids, but we also realize that the reactions go both ways. Let's say I'm on that low carb diet that I happen to be on right now. Okay, I'm not getting many carbs. My body needs carbs. So what's my body doing? Well, it's taking that high protein that I'm eating and it's breaking that protein down into amino acids and it's taking those amino acids and converting them into intermediates in the citric acid cycle. It's converting them into intermediates that it can use to make glucose. So for example, glutamic acid, by what I've just told you, can easily be made into alpha ketoglutarate. That can be used in the citric acid cycle. I can convert aspartic acid into um, the um, uh, uh, into oxaloacetate. That can be used either in the citric acid cycle or in gluconeogenesis. Alanine can be made into pyruvate, and pyruvate can be made into glucose. Okay, so the, all of these things are useful for me. So I can now take protein molecules and use them not only for energy, but also for making glucose, something that I really need. Does that make sense? Yes, question. Very good question. Aren't you going to end up with a lot of nitrogen? Are you going to end up with more nitrogen than you, than you want? And the answer to your question is, again, we have to start thinking about balance. You're absolutely right. So what I'm probably going to be doing is I'm going to be excreting a lot more urea if I'm taking in an awful lot of nitrogen. You're correct. Okay? All right. Now, so that brings us to, again, nitrogen balance and thinking about how we're going to deal with that. Before I talk about that, I do want to talk about a little bit about uh, some of the implications of the metabolism of these things, okay? Um, this is a pathway that, actually, I'm not going to talk about that. Let's not talk about that. That's the synthesis of serine, which really, for our purposes, is not uh, particularly important. But something that is important is folate, okay? Folate turns out to be important for, um, as we'll see when we talk about nucleotide metabolism, Folate is an important source of single carbon atoms. For many biological reactions, it donates single carbon atoms. This includes some of the amino acids, and I'm not going to talk about which ones, that doesn't matter. But what does matter is that folate is essential for us. It is, in fact, an essential nutrient. We have to have it in our diet because we don't synthesize it, okay? If you don't have sufficient folate in your diet and you are a pregnant woman, you are in, your baby is likely in trouble. It's, it's, it is linked to uh, neural tube defects. Very, very significant problem. It's been discovered in the, probably the past 15 or 20 years and those neural tube defects are, are essentially cured by uh, supplementing diets with folate, right? So folate's very, very important. We don't make folate. Because we don't make folate, that actually turns out to be to our advantage. And it's to our advantage because bacteria do make folate, and therefore we can muck with their metabolism. We muck with their metabolism by starting with some of the components that they need to make folate. Since we don't make folate, they don't affect us. Okay? So that's part of what is shown here. There's a better figure, actually. And that figure is right uh, here. Okay, um, This shows some analogs of folic acid that interfere with the bacteria's ability to use folate and or in, uh, synthesize fo folate. Okay, One's right here. Um, and I thought, I think I've got a better one. Hold on, where am I at? Serine folate. Here we go, sulfa drugs. Okay. Now, we can see better some of the drugs that are used to treat um, the um, bacteria. So, for example, tetrahydrofolate is, a, is, is something that's, that we need in our diet. We need to have this in order to make certain molecules. And this tetrahydrofolate is made by bacteria. If we look at some of the things that are given to kill bacteria, anybody know what that is? 
Does that not look familiar to anybody? Uh, not hair products, no. Nobody's ever heard of Paba? It's sunscreen. Okay. Sunscreen contains a sulfur drug, Paba. And the reason it kills bacteria is because, look at this, this part of the bacterium looks like this. If we put Paba in, we can, or if, if we put a Paba derivative in, we can actually muck with it. So bacteria need Paba. If we give them this, it stops their ability to make folates. So I said that a little backwards. Let me say it again. Paba is not interfering. Paba is what the bacteria need. This interferes with their use of Paba. Okay. So Paba is not something that inhibits bacteria. Paba is something the bacteria need. This is a, a Paba derivative. It stops bacteria from being able to make folates. If they can't make folates, they can't divide. They can't synthesize the things that they need. So again, our knowledge of metabolism allows us to design drugs that inhibit the ability of organisms to, to replicate without having any effect on us. No, you don't need to know that name, but you should know. Well, actually, you should know just sulfonamides in general. Yes, you should know that. Ah, serine deglycine. Okay, you don't need to know this pathway, but this is just an example of a place where a, a folate is actually used. It's used in this case to take uh, one of the uh, carbons, and when it takes the carbon, we see it making glycine. If we go in the rightward direction, we make serine. If we go in the leftward direction. So we can either take or uh, give up a, uh, a single carbon. The single carbon is this guy right here. It's disappeared over here, you see. OK. And let's see. Cysteine, don't need to worry about that. Sulfur is another limiting nutrient like nitrogen. And your book throws it in here because we're talking about limiting uh, or balanced nutrients. Sulfur is necessary for all living organisms because we need sulfur in two amino acids. We need sulfur in cysteine, and we need sulfur in methionine. Sulfur in the, um, 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 in nature has to be reduced, and there are sulfur reducing organisms that perform that function so that we ultimately end up with reduced sulfur that we can use in the form of making cysteine or making methionine. Oxidized sulfur, such as sulfates and so forth, which are very abundant on Earth, are not easily used for the purpose of making those amino acids. So that takes, uh, if you want to think of them as sulf sulfifying bacteria, you can see some of that process going on here, where we ultimately end up with a reduced sulfur that is useful uh, to us. OK. Another, we're throwing all kinds of things at you right here. Another thing that's important, and I will get back to nitrogen uh, in a second. Another important molecule in amino acid metabolism and other kinds of metabolism is that known as S-adenosyl methionine. It's related to methionine, which is an amino acid. And it's actually made from methionine. And why is it important? It's important because it's another molecule that donates single carbons. This carbon right uh, here is readily given up by this molecule. And this carbon right here is this carbon in methionine. So when this guy gets linked to an, an adenine group, as we see here, we make S-adenosyl methionine. When it gives up this carbon, it makes something called S-adenosyl homocysteine, which is just SAM without the, the extra carbon. So like tetrahydrofolate gave up extra carbons, to donate for biological processes, so too does S-adenosyl methionine donate a carbon for biological processes as well. You can call it SAM or you can call it SAH if you'd like, yeah. OK. And let's see, what else do I want to say here? Essential amino acids. Now, getting back to some, some nutrition and some amino acids. I'm sure everybody's heard the term essential amino acids. Essential amino acids uh, refer to the fact that we have to have them in our diet. Our bodies are unable to synthesize them. And the list of essential amino acids will vary from